First things first, what do we want? Well, what we want is right here. It says we want to know what the plane's rate of descent was. That's what we want. Okay, cool. So with that said, let's go ahead and figure it out. Let's write that out. All right, everybody. When we're looking for the rate of descent, which one of these are we looking for? Y, M, X, or B? Which one is it? Which one is it? Quite easily, which one is it going to be? If we're looking for the rate of descent, are we looking for the Y, the M, the X, or the B? Again, if we're looking for the rate of descent, if we're looking for the rate of descent, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Because in those notes that we just saw right over here, again, M represents the rate. M represents the rate. So, boom. We know that we're looking for M. Let's highlight that right here. That's what we want. Boom. Now, let's go ahead and see what other pieces of information we have. So, right over here, it says a plane began descending already. What do you think is going to come in this sentence when you see the words a plane began? What do you think is going to come next? Yeah, the beginning amount, B, for sure. Again, a plane began descending from this altitude. So they tell you where we were at the start, the beginning amount. Again, paying attention to context clues, that's going to play the biggest role in your success when it comes to this topic. So began descending from an altitude 16,600 feet above sea level. So that's what I'll write right over here. Remember that when you feel that something is complicated, it's most likely because you haven't set your foundations. So remember to start with the math basics course. That way you can set those foundations and then come back to something like this and understand that there's two separate things. There's actually setting up the English into math and then actually doing the math. So remember that, get your math basics set up. That way you can focus more on word problems like this and dominate them at the end of the day. That's 16,600 feet above sea level. Use consistent colors here, black. All right, next up, then it says at a constant rate. So it started descending from here at a constant rate over the course of 43 minutes. Everyone, what is the 43 minutes going to represent? Right, whenever you see time, that's a very good guarantee that you're dealing with X. Um, sometimes again, other things could be time. Like if they're saying that something is dependent on how many toys the factory built, or if it's dependent on time, or dependent on whatever factors, whatever you're depending on is X. So typically, Everything depends on time. Time doesn't depend on anything else. So that's going to be your X more often than not. So here we go. Let's go ahead and mark that out. I'll use purple here for this one. 43 minutes. And so that'll be 43 right there. We're looking for the M. And what is the resulting amount? Well, it says right here, the plane finished its descent at an altitude of 3,700 feet above sea level. So that's where it finished. That's where it resulted, its resulting altitude. Boom, there we are, 3,700 feet. Everyone, yes or no? Do you agree with the setup? Is this setup properly in your eyes? And there we go. Again, that's phase one. Translating the English into math. Step two, now we calculate. So again, remember, it's two different phases, two different phases, I got you, two different phases, translating the English into math, and also calculation. If you set this up as distance equals rate times time sherm, what would have been is it would have been for you, I believe it would have been uh, 12,900 equals 43M. That's probably what you have sherm, and you're going to see that that's, that's going to show up exactly here in just one step. Because remember, distance rate time takes into account how far you're going, not, hey, here's the beginning, here's the end. They're the same exact thing. 
but watch how it transforms into distance rate time in just one moment. So here we are. Let's go ahead and solve this. First step is going to be to subtract both sides by one, uh, 16,600. So once we do that, boom, let's go ahead and keep moving forward. So for those of you who are concerned about dealing with such a large subtraction, you have a little 3,700, we're subtracting a massive 16,000. Remember that a positive and being subtracted by a huge number is the same thing as just doing the 16,000 minus 3,700, but the answer is going to be negative. It's because you're taking a difference, but remember that the answer is going to follow the sign of that bigger value. The bigger value is 16,000. So you know this is going to be negative. You're taking away way more than you have. So remember that. So just flip it. 16,000 minus 3,700 over here if you want to do it like this. Well, that's going to be zero, zero, 60 minus 37. That will end up being what? Well, we can go ahead and actually just, boom. And I believe it was 16,600. So let me not make that mistake as I'm teaching y'all. Perfect there. So let me go ahead and correct that here. No reason to make unnecessary mistakes. Booyah. And then put a seven. There we go. So zero, zero. Then we have essentially here five then we got 16 16 minus 7 that's going to end up being 9 then we have 5 minus 3 and then boom we have the 1 so that'll be 12,900 but that will be a negative 12,900 sweet so now that we're here, I know mental math, like, watch that. Like it was so much easier for me to do mental math than it was for me to actually write the numbers out. So that's how, that's the point you can get to with enough practice and consistency. So now that we're here, if you solve this like distance rate time, this is probably what you're looking at. This is probably what you were looking at from the very beginning. And now the last step, everybody, is what? What's the last step? Yep, divide both sides, that's right. The hardest part about practicing for the ASVAB, in my opinion, is knowing when you're ready. Knowing that you are good to go and move on from this topic, and that's why our full program has a progress dashboard, letting you know exactly what you're good at and what you need to work on. And the great thing is, you can join our full program for free for a full week, no credit card required. That's our trial that's available for you. So go ahead and text TRIAL to 833-321-0182 or click the link in the description of this video to get started and have yourself a good time. Go ahead and do it, my ASVAB party people. I'll see you in there. Divide both sides. So if you're sitting here saying, I see in the chat box here, you guys are saying, hey, I set it up the opposite way. I put the um, 16,600 on the Y and then I put the 3,700 on the B. Um, the reason that you still got the correct answer is simply because this question does not account for positive or negative at the end because they already say descent. I'll show you what that means in a second, but here we are. We'll end this problem by dividing 43 on both sides. And here we go. We'll go ahead and just do some long division real quick. I'm going to see if I can just sneak it in here at the bottom left. So feel free to follow along. We have 43 going into, and it's going to be, what is it? 12,900. Okay. So 43 doesn't go into one, doesn't go into 12. It does go into four, uh, 129, and that's gonna be three times because 43 times three, 40 times three, 120, three times three, nine. So 129, so boom. And so then we just have zero zeros across the board. That's what's left over. So boom, we have the answer being 300, but remember it was a negative divided by a positive so that's going to end up being a negative value. M, let me get back to the regular sizing here. So M equals negative 300. That's your answer for your rate. Everybody, what does that mean? What does that mean? We're talking about rate here. Our rate is negative 300. What does that mean? Right. Your your rate is negative 300 per minute, 
But because it's negative, does that mean that the plane is ascending or descending? Does that mean the plane is ascending or descending? If it's a negative value. Yeah, if it's a negative, it's descending. It's going down. It is descending. And that's how you know that you did it right. Because right here, what was the plane's rate of descent? So you are expecting a negative value because it's supposed to be descending. If you ended up with a positive value, that shows that you did indeed switch those values accidentally for the only reason being that you probably felt more comfortable dealing with a positive number at the end and you would have compromised yourself if they would have shown two separate rates, one positive and one negative 300. So just wanna make sure that you're careful. Your answer here is still gonna be correct. It's still gonna be C if you had it, but I do wanna caution you about seeking convenience over fact. Don't forget, we have a free class once a week, typically on Mondays, 6 p.m. Eastern time. If you'd like to join, go ahead, go to that link over there, or text free class to 833-321-0182. Hey, it's the ASVAB.